I don't know how you guys are going to take this, but most of the time in my career, I've had a bunch of young men that I could always count that they would play hard for me. Uh, I'm tough. Uh, sometimes I'm a little bit more crusty than they like. I, I could be the, 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 the guy that's on their butt. But I think when they know that you love them and that you care about them off the field as well as on the field and you stay consistent and you stay true to yourself, which is the main thing I try to do throughout my career. And I, I, some of this stuff may come up. I just want to be true to myself throughout my career. Integrity and hard work and discipline and loyalty and dedication, those are all things that I tried to instill to our my kids. And uh, I think they really wanted to get this one for me. There was a lot of love after the game. And uh, like I said, this is better than the dream I could have had. It ended better than the dream I could have had. It's just... When you're talking about the dream, are you talking about the whole career or just tonight? I'm talking about tonight, you know, if you want a way to end a, end the deal, I mean, I guess if we could have shut out, it would be better, but we scored two touchdowns on defense. We stopped the run for the most part, and we played great pass defense. We didn't give up, but we gave up two long runs, one on a stretch play that we didn't get in the gap correctly, and one on the quarterback scramble at the end there, and I'm pissed because I didn't call odd spy five instead of outlaw five because I knew I, I, I'm still mad at that. That would We would have stopped them. But they're good athletes, a good football team also. So uh, here we are again. I'm just rambling. Nick, <laughs> sentimental, Nick. I mean, tears, uh, just joy. Uh, I saw you got splashed, but you hugged your family first. I saw that. It, well, family's important to me. There was a lot of people there. There was a lot of people that were happy for me. Yeah. Uh, this game's bigger than me. It just so happens that this was my last rodeo, as somebody wrote, the last rodeo in Texas. And uh, it feels good to go out this way. Uh, I thought that at the middle, at that November stretch, stretch there, that. You know, we needed a little bit of uplift, and that's why I opened my big mouth and said 10 and 2 still good last time I remembered. And if we win 10, we'd win 11. And then I backtracked on that because I didn't want to bring too much attention. But I really believed it. Mm -hmm. I really believed it. We win 10, we win 11. We're 11 and 2. We've had four straight years of 11 plus wins. I don't know if that's ever happened in the history of this program. We're in the top 10 for sure, because we were 10, so we can't go down, I don't think. Uh, we actually had a chance to play in a BCS Bowl, but we have no control over that. But really, that was just a matter of who they wanted to pick. Uh, with all due respect to everybody else, we're just as good as those other teams that they picked. We are. Uh, we had a hiccup against Arizona. Stanford was one of those games that we just did not play our game offensively with a hurt quarterback, and I'm not blaming it on the offense, and they were able to do what they wanted. That's the reality of it. You saw it. You watched the game. Marcus Mariota, psh. are you kidding me? He doesn't go back for the Heisman. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Who in the heck makes that pick? Uh, Marcus Mariota is one of the best quarterbacks in the country, one of the best players in the country, and everybody here knows it. And if you had a vote, would he be in your top three? Would he not be in your top three? Absolutely. Seriously, would he not be in your top three? Yeah. Jason? Absolutely. I didn't hear an answer. Yeah. Would he be in your top three? Yes, coach. Who yes, says coach. no? Yes, right? Coach. Speak up. Get off the He's friggin' so fence. <laughs> uh, is he in your top three, Austin? Sorry, I missed the first part. Is Marcus Mayo in the top three for the Heisman? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Then he should have been there. Nick, tonight, is Avery having a big game? You know, Pittsburgh guy, does that carry any significance for you? Wow. You know, you. you, you, you just the remembrance of, 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 as you can see, I'm on cloud nine, guys. I didn't envision how this thing would go out, and I never knew how I would react in my last game. And I was emotional last night, and I barely got through the talk with the kids, and then I regrouped, and I don't know. What were you doing up in the box when Avery took it in the zone? Hooting and hollering and jumping up and down. I mean, it's kind of neat when you recruit a kid from Pittsburgh, a young man from Pittsburgh, you give him an opportunity, he graduates, he played a big part in our, in our success throughout the years. He's had three or four, I don't know the number, interceptions for a touchdown. He had one this year they called back. It's a bad call, but 
I can't talk about that anymore, but yeah, people don't know how to call it pass interference. They still don't know how to call it pass interference. These were ACC officials, so, okay. Uh, I don't know how to call face masks. Oh, are, are you kidding me? Marcus Mariota's is not a face mask? Did anybody see that? Oh, yeah. Anyway, hey, guys, I appreciate all you. You know, I'm going to miss you because I like talking to you. You know, I'm going to miss you. I really am. Uh, I don't know if you'll miss me, <laughs> but I'm going to miss you. And uh, I'll answer any questions. And then, you, and then there, I, what's we put what's it Oregon in. football mean to you, just overall? It's been my life. It's been my whole life. I, I got here in 1978 as a GA in a green Volkswagen Bug with $200, no place to live, and every any bit of clothes that I owned. I had no place to live. I took a chance. Rich Brooks gave me a chance to come up and be a GA. I'm not kidding you when I say this. I, had, I was sleeping in the locker room, the old locker room. I had nowhere to eat. I ate as much train table as I could. Uh, a Daisy Duck lady took me in as long as I would mow her lawn and stuff. Then I had a place to live. Before I was done with her, I started, before I was done there, I was calling her grandma. She was watching my, washing my clothes, was upset when I wasn't there for dinner, was setting the rules on what I could and couldn't do. And, and five decades at one place, not continuously, but only Joe Paterno, I think, has been in, in one place for five decades, if I'm correct. So, no, not five decades. And so it's very important to me to have seen the, the ascension from the buildings that we have now and the Taj Mahal that we have now used to be parking lots. Austin wasn't even born yet when I was coaching. <laughs> How were you in 1978, Austin? 1978, I was six years away from my From being born? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you were minus six? Yeah. My parents weren't even together. So. Be careful when you question me then for now on. <laughs> if you were minus six, I know a little bit more than you do. <laughs> Nick, can you put into words what it's been like to preside over the defense during this whole transformation? You just touched on it. It's been awesome. What else, whatever you want me to say. I mean, I'm on a cloud tonight, uh, probably making a fool of myself, but who, what happens after this, you know? What was the scene like in the locker room after the game? Did they give you a ball or anything? They wanted me to make a speech. Uh, I made a short speech. I could be long-winded, <laughs> but I basically told them that I was proud of them. It was, it was a thank you for the ride. Thanks for the 11-2. and two. Remember that there's no... Remember to always finish and attack, and that there's no substitute for hard work. And if you put in the hard work, and remember to finish and attack and be men of Oregon, then next year everything should be just fine. How about in your last game that your defense outscores Texas's offense? Like I said, I couldn't have written a better script. It's better than than the dream that I might have had. Uh, I just wanted to win. How we won. I just want to win, but to win and have played a great defensive game and give up less than 240 yards and score twice on defense and to finally stop the run uh, was awesome. Best defensive performance of the year? I'm going to say yes. Best defensive performance of the year. Is there, is there some irony? We played pretty good in the, in the Fiesta Bowl last year. <laughs> we played pretty good in the national championship game. We played pretty good in the Fiesta Bowl against Colorado. We played pretty good in the big games. Even guys that doubt us, yeah, you could write that if you want. Who cares? <laughs> After this, they can write about me anyway. You can write whatever you want. I don't care what you write. Just don't write anything about Mike Leach. <laughs> in game, was it the same for you as any other? Or were, I mean, were you looking around or kind of soaking uh, it all, or could you treat it like another one? I, once the game got started, it's just you just get on autopilot and it's the same as any other. Uh, I would have to say when we scored the final touchdown on defense, and it looked like there was about seven minutes or 6:05, whatever it was left. I think it was 6:05, 8:55. I kind of felt like. They need three eights to beat us. Probably not going to happen. We're going to win this game. I was upset on the long drive at the end because, like I said, if I called Odd Spy Five, he wouldn't have got outside of Taylor, and we would have came up with a boat and tackled him. But you don't always make the best call. You don't always make the perfect call. But the kids execu executed the plan to perfection.
Perfection. How about Taylor in the game he and the D-line played? They're awesome. You guys have had enough of me. All right. Is there some irony in the fact that your last game, your defense scores more touchdowns than your offense? I'll take it. Nick, Avery said that he was holding back his emotions, and I think he said that you mean more to him than any other coach uh, that he's ever had. And, and he, he, was, he was emotional out there on the podium. What does that mean to you to hear your players talk about you in that way? It's, it's better than a win. It's the winning is a, I will say this, to win a game is the best drug in the world. It's the only drug I choose to, to take, all right? But there's drugs out there that people take. To me, winning, when you work hard, winning is the absolute best drug in the world. It's the absolute best. There's no feeling like winning when you put so much blood, sweat, and tears and times into something, and it all works out the way you hope it does, all right? Uh, what was the second part of that? That was about Avery and how much it means to you to hear your players talk about I've you. had a lot of my players, this sounds like braggy, but most of the players that I've coached throughout the year have always played hard for me because uh, they take them a while to get me because I'm always the same. I'm always tough. I'm always hard on them but it's life lessons and things that I want them to learn on and off the field. It's more important to me I got a lot of comments, and you guys are asking the questions. It was more important to me that I had 50 plus notes from players or comments from players that said, Coach, past, present, past and present, I guess all I could say, old guys that I coached before that said, basically they said, thank you for being a great coach, but you're even a better man, and you made me a better man. Those kinds of things are, you can't buy that. What's the first thing you're going to do in retirement? January 1st, I'm going to sit on the couch and watch every game that's played. I love watching college football. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. January 5th, I'm headed down to the Bay Area to go duck hunting with my brothers for four days. And then after that, I haven't thought much more after that, you know. But the first thing I'm going to do is get a lot of sleep and sit on the couch all day and watch other people coach and play college football. I love college football. I love the game of college football. And you guys got to be bored with me by now, okay? Coach, uh, Mac also leaving today. 